Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Ghost Whisperer with your ghost host, Chelsea, and welcome to my side of the podcasting world. I am so excited to be doing this. And for those of you that have been following me for a while, or maybe you're new here, I am a um, co host on the Sticks and Bones podcast. And this is my spinoff podcast where we are going to be talking about all the things spooky, paranormal, um, all the things about being a psychic medium, experiences with spirits, how I came into my mediumship. I'm going to be sharing some of the client ghost host hotline stories here as well. And we're going to be talking about, you know, where do we go when we die? What happens when we die? What are your experiences? What have spirits told you? So this is really a place to do a deep dive on everything paranormal and spooky. And I am a professional evidential psychic medium. I have been for quite some time. We're actually going to be going into my story today because I really, really get the question all the time about how I became a medium. I can see and hear spirits. I'm not even just a medium. I can literally see on the spiritual plane. I'm also a professional witch. So, um, and I specialize in studying the paranormal, banishing spirits from people's homes, making allegiances, alliances, setting boundaries with spirits and helping people understand hauntings versus residual energy and really helping the living understand the deceased and the dead that are still here. Um, so this is what we're going to be diving into. And I'm so happy you're here. Thank you all for supporting me on my journey. I can't wait to give you more content, more personal content of my experiences. And don't worry. Okay. I'm still on sticks and bones. I am not leaving sticks and bones. This is just my own separate endeavor. And 10 will be doing her own separate endeavor as well to dive into archaeological stuff. So we're really excited. This is just a platform to be able to give you more content, more spookiness, more spooky vibes. And let's kick off our first episode, shall we? So this podcast is just going to be me talking into the ether to all of my spooky followers, clients, customers, friends, family, fans of the show. And I also want to hear from you as well. So you can email me your ghost host hotline stories at um, the ghost whisperer at gmail.com. And that is going to be where I can read your stories. I'll read them on air and we can, you know, break them down like we used to do on the Six and Bones podcast and talk about your paranormal experiences. My hopes with this podcast is to teach people about death, to teach people that spirits are still here, to teach people that, you know, you are valid in that paranormal experience that you've had. Sometimes it's extremely traumatizing. Sometimes it's interesting and sweet. Sometimes it's nice to hear from a deceased loved one, but let's be honest, anything that is completely unseen or paranormal can be absolutely terrifying to most people because it's like this unseen force that we can't understand. And this is my job in this world is to be able to understand it so I can re-educate everybody else. And I'm not the only one. There's tons of mediums out here and we're all extremely different. We all have different beliefs. And that's another thing we're going to be talking about. Um, you know, where do we go when we die? Do afterlives actually exist? Are people in a peaceful place? Do they still watch over me? And these are a lot of subjects I hope can bring you comfort while we are going to talk about the spooky and the strange. We also are going to be talking about, you know, grief, um, moving through grief and understanding, you know, how our spirits are communicating with us on the other side. So I'm excited. I know you guys are going to learn a lot. I have so many stories, so much to teach and so much to give. So let's dive into our first episode here on the Ghost Whisperer. And today we're going to be talking about, Chelsea, how did this happen to you? Because let me tell you, it was not fun. It was not fun. Okay, so I do want to talk about my story a little bit because I wasn't always a professional evidential psychic medium, okay? A lot of people think that this starts when you're a kid. And yes, I can recall some instances where I had experiences as a kid talking to the dead, but it's not as com it's not as common as people think. I do totally think that um, I, I was able to communicate with the dead as a child, but I just was not tapped into it as much as I had wanted to. And, um, so I do recall one instance of me having an encounter with like my deceased uncle when I was a child who I didn't know. And, um, the more I like dive 
delve into like recalling my own story, the more that I can see I've had experiences with the dead for a very long time. But I think as a kid, I kind of forgot about it. And it wasn't as prominent as other people's experiences as children. So, you know, it's, um, it happened for me, I would say when I was an older adult, which I think is way more scarier, (laughs) um, in my own personal opinion. And honestly, my story is not, it didn't start off great. It actually was really traumatic for me. Um, I've had to heal from it as well and understand it as best that I can because my whole life completely changed when I was able to see and hear spirits and commune with the dead. And it's it's not something that you have total control over. Um, it is a gift that it's on. I mean, you can ignore it. You can turn it off. You can set boundaries. But it's a gift that's always on. And even when you do turn it off, it's still there. So um, there's a lot of things. So we're going to dive into it today because I know I get this question all the time of how did this happen to you? Um, My family asked me the same thing because I was around, let's see, I'm 32. I'm going to be 32. I happened around 2017. But remember, up to this point, I was having experiences. Um, I want to say I was like 27, 28. Yeah, somewhere around there, 25, 26, 27, that area. Um, Once again, it's hard for me to recall time because it was very traumatic for me. So sometimes like I have a hard time recalling certain years, but okay, let's dive into it. So the baseline of this, my grandma died when I was 15. Okay. And a lot of you maybe can relate. My grandmother was my best friend. I spent um, every, almost every weekend with her. She was my mom's mother And she was very near and dear to me. So she died when she was young. She was only in like her 70s, her early 70s. Uh, I think it was late 60s, early 70s. And she died in a very, you know, tragic way. And it really affected me. I think that was my first experience really. Um, And my grandfather, I'm sorry, had died five months previous to that. And they were married. So I lost my grandfather And five months later, my grandmother passed away and they were in the hospital at the same time. It was a very traumatic experience. And I was just a young girl in high school. I was 15, 16 years old. Um, I had just had my sweet 16 and it was devastating for my family. So I remember like the grief was just so bad um, because at that age, you don't really know. I lost both of my grandparents who were at my house all of the time, really close to she was my best friend. They both were. And how do you process that? So when I was 16, I started receiving dreams from my grandmother from the other side. Okay. And remember, I've never experienced death up until this point. Like I was very lucky. I've never lost anybody until I was 16 years old. And I really thought like at first that it was just my grief overtaking me of like, okay, I'm dreaming about my grandmother, but she kept telling me to tell my mom and my my family that she was okay. And she was like standing in this beautiful field of flowers and like very much at peace. And the way she died, it was not peaceful. Um, Neither of them were at peace. So she kept giving me the same dream over and over and over again, okay? Like all the time. And my grandfather would pop in too. And I never told anybody because you know, like you just kind of think it's a dream and you're not really thinking anything of it. And uh, well, I would soon come to find out that that was the start of everything for me. Um, I then turned, I would say a few years later, I kept having these dreams, never told anybody. Um, and then I was about 23 and I bought my first ever tarot deck. I was like always obsessed with psychics and mediums my whole life. Like even as a 16 year old, I used to go to like the corner psychic and pay $20 to get like a chuggy card reading done. That wasn't correct. Um, I just was obsessed with all of it. So I went to a bodega out in Brooklyn and I, you only were able to go by word of mouth. And this guy brought me into a back room with a card table And he told me in my reading, and I've been to many of psychics at this point, like it was a, it was like an obsession for me. It was like my Roman empire, to be honest. Like, you know, I was just trying to figure out how it works. And he told me, he was like, you're going, you are actually a really spiritual person and you have an incredible gift. And I really, he's like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I really think you need to buy this tarot deck. 
And I had never thought about doing divination before. I was like, I don't know. I'm like 20. I might've been 22, 22, 23. So I buy the deck. Um, it was like $15. And he was like, I'm not trying to make money off of you. I really think your, your spirits are telling me that you need this. And he brought up my grandmother. And I was like, what the hell? So I buy the deck. And from that point on, I learned divination. I was doing tarot readings. Um, I've been reading tarot for like literally over 10 years <laughs> up until like until this point. Um, it is like it ha- brings me so much comfort and peace. And I really love doing tarot readings. So like I still do readings today. I still use my tarot and oracle decks. I have like so many of them. But anyway. So then from that point on, I, I am now doing tarot readings. And the dreams from my grandmother are very far and few in between. So I kind of just write it off. Okay. 2017 rolls around. Now, I would read tarot as like a party trick um, for my friends. I didn't think I was any good at it, to be honest. I would just read for people that were close to me. We would read on boys and dating and, you know, should I get this job? Should I not? And I would get my tarot deck and, you know that kind of stuff. I never really took it too seriously. So my friend brought me to um, her friends, her co-workers like house one night. We were just doing like a wine night and having cheese. And she said, hey, Chelsea, do you mind bringing your tarot deck? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like I could do a couple of readings. So I don't really know any of these girls. I'm, I'm with my roommate. I'm going to this wine and cheese night with her co-workers and her one coworker, um, she really wanted to get a reading done with me. So I, you know, we're all sitting around, like everyone's drinking wine. And she was like, I really want to hear from my dad. And I'm like, oh, I was like, I just am doing tarot readings. Like I'm not connecting with the dead. Like I don't know how to do that. And she was like, well, what if you just tried? And I was like, I've never really tried. Okay, I guess like I, you know, you can commune with spirits and the dead through tarot cards I know now. But like at the time I was like, oh, I've never really thought about it. So this is where this gets crazy. Okay. And it gets even crazier from this point on. I just had, I had to set the scene for you guys of like what is going on and how this happened. So I start reading and I know nothing about her. I know nothing about her dad. I know like her dad passed away because that's what she told me. I start receiving these intense visions, I guess, because I had allowed myself to tap into it of her dad and his final moments. And I started telling her things that she didn't even tell her best friend who was in the room. And it got to the point where like the, the dead and the mediumship was so intense that a picture of her and her dad flew off the, um, coffee table in the room. Okay. So like everybody starts crying. So I'm giving her like this message of closure and I'm channeling her dad. Okay. I'm not even using my tarot cards at this point. I am like full fledged in a psychic medium channeling moment, which I've never done before. And then I passed out. I wind up passing out because I don't, it's, it's a gift that you don't know how to control until you learn. So that was that. So I wake up the next morning and I am feeling like absolute crap because I guess I had channeled the dead and I still couldn't believe it, but everybody bared witness to it in that room that night that I actually did my first ever mediumship channel and I wasn't even looking for it. So then now I've opened up my mediumship. It's still, you would think that I'm like, okay, I could talk to the dead. I'm going to practice. I didn't. I put this experience behind me and I was like, okay, that was like a really weird thing that happened to me. Um, I'm just going to keep moving on with my life. And I don't know if I want to explore that any further because I was feeling like the, I, when I channel, I take on people's grief and I, and I do go to their final moments in life. Like that is, that happens to me often. And it was very traumatic for me to see. And I had completely shut down and I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I'm just going to stick to like my fun tarot readings. Okay. So, you know, you're probably like, what do you mean? You just didn't think about it again. I didn't, I'm telling you I didn't. Cause it was just so weird. And I was like, there's no way I just did that. I think I was like also psyching myself out. So I keep having these little moments of like, my grandmother is now coming back into my dreams. So 2020 hits, okay? COVID, the pandemic. 
I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was struggling with my mental health. Um, right before COVID, I had gone through a very serious depressive episode. Um, work was really stressful for me and I had never really gone to therapy before, but this is important to the story. Trust me. But I finally booked an appointment with a therapist and I was still struggling with my depression. So I go to therapy. And one of the things that they tell you, if you've been to therapy before for depression or anxiety is like, try mindfulness, right? So this is like right before COVID, like literally a few months before COVID happens. I am going to a therapist once a week and I'm learning, excuse me, I'm learning mindfulness. So like meditating, walking, getting in touch with yourself spiritually, Um, I did a lot of exercising and yoga practices and COVID hits and I had to move back home with my parents and my mindfulness I'm now relying on now more than ever because it's the pandemic, crazy things are going on outside. What is going on in the world? You know what I mean? It's, It's already bad enough that I was feeling depressed and now we have like this plague plaguing the whole entire earth. So I was meditating doing yoga, taking walks, and really, really working on myself. And I don't know what the hell happened because I started communing with the dead even more. I'd be in meditation and the dead would be talking to me. And I think because I was allowing myself the connection and to spend time on quieting my mind, I was able to hear the dead. So now my I I feel the dead. I'm I'm channeling ancestors I've never even spoken to. I'm practicing on my dad. I'm like figuring out I really am a medium. I'm like getting all these things right. I'm providing evidence. Ancestors I don't even know are coming forward. So it was crazy. And then one day, my sight opens up and my hearing. I can hear and li- like see spirits on the spiritual plane. Okay. So like not only am I medium, which is mediums commune with the dead who are crossed over, I am now communing with spirits that are still here. And so I'll tell you how I knew my site opened up. And and this and this was a very serious moment in my life. Um I went somewhere. I went somewhere out in the pandemic. I think I was like going to a grocery store or something. I can't remember. Um, I had to go out and get something. And I saw I was in like the checkout line for the store. And I saw this like spirit following around this couple. And I'm not going to go into details because it was super traumatic. And he sees that I can see him and he runs towards me crying and screaming and asking for help. And I, for a moment, had to like check yourself mentally, right? Because I always believe in the normal before the paranormal. So I'll get to the, how did you not know? How how did you know you weren't like having some sort of hallucinations or some sort of like mental health red flag coming up for you? And I remember I tried to ignore it because I was like, okay, maybe I'm just like, Um, maybe I'm just seeing something. I don't know. And it kept happening. And he was like tugging on my jacket. And it was to the point where like, he was not letting up with the fact that he was here. And I had to, I dropped my stuff in the middle of the checkout line and I ran out of the store, ran out of the store. And I started hysterically crying the next day. Okay. The next day I go, I go somewhere. I'm having another encounter where I'm seeing a spirit. Okay, we think there's a haunted house that's like on one of the main roads that we drive across. And I walked past it one day and I started seeing things. So I had to actually go back home and I cried and I was afraid to leave my house because I was seeing things. And it wasn't like every time. It was just like occasionally I'm picking up on energy. I'm picking up on weird things. I'm picking up on a residual haunting. I'm picking up on a spirit that's walking around this haunted house that we drive past all the time. And it was like everything was intensified times a million for me. I was exhausted. The dead's trying to talk to me. I really feel like I'm claustrophobic. The walls are closing in on me and I don't know what to do. And now I'm raised in a Catholic household. Okay. So like all this is going on and I am not telling my parents this. Okay. I'm not telling my parents this. So 
my site opened up in like a very super traumatic way. And I am a big believer in, you know, understanding when you are having a mental health issue versus a spiritual gift, because I'm going to tell you right now, there is a fine line. All right. Um, you have to be careful. And I could tell you that I tried to ignore it. Okay. And that it was just so blatantly in my face that I couldn't ignore it. And I was getting things and, and I provide evidence for people. It's why I call myself an evidential medium. I provide evidence to people where it's like things I wouldn't even know that only you and the dead would know I'm bringing forward. So I had to really work on that. Um, I had uh, a few psychological tests done on myself as well because I was going to therapy at this point. And to be honest, I was feeling great. Like nothing was distressing me aside from the fact we were in like a really weird time, which was COVID. I was feeling better than ever. Like the mindfulness was working. My therapy was working. So when this happened, it was like out of nowhere. So from that moment on, I realized that I was able to see and hear spirits and I had to teach myself um, how to control my spiritual gifts because I can now go outside and I don't have to see and I don't have to talk to the dead every day because that's no way to live. But you will hear a lot of mediums talk about how it is uncontrollable almost at first of like everything just kind of bombards you and you have to learn how to live alongside of it. So in 2021, almost a year after um, my gifts opened up, I decided to quit my job to pursue mediumship and working with the paranormal and spirits full time. So I very much understand uh, my purpose and what I am to do uh, with my time here on this earth. And that is to help and bring light to the spiritual plane, which I can see and hear on and also give people closure. And I love the paranormal. You know, I am going to be talking about some of my spooky, scary stories, um, what I really think about demons, things like that all these fun things on this podcast episode. But, you know, it's it's like people want this type of gift. But then the the way that it transpired for me was just so traumatic and, and you have to learn how to handle it. So I always like to share that because it's not a glamorous thing. Um, I never thought it was glamorous when I had it. I actually cried because I could. Um, I really cried and said, I don't even, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want this, but then I realized it was my job. And that is why I have this podcast. It's why I call myself the ghost whisperer, because I can commune with the dead. I can commune with spirits and ghosts. I can understand why they're haunting a place. If they'll talk to me, um, I'm very big on teaching respect, especially in a situation of a haunting where there's a spirit still tied somewhere. Um, I love finding lost spirits and lost souls and asking them if they need help. So this is a lot of what we're going to dive into on the ghost whisperer. And I'm so excited to share my knowledge that I have been accumulating for a very long time. Um, I do this full time and I can't wait. I can't wait to bring you all on this journey with me. So thank you for being here. Um, this is going to most likely be a bi-weekly podcast. Um, sticks and bones is going to be every week still. So don't worry, we're not abandoning ship. But this is just only going to add more to the content and give you more of a look into what it's like to be a paranormal medium, a professional evidential psychic medium. And how do I deal with situations with spirits? You know, what is it like to deal with the unseen, deal with the unknown? And, you know, how can I help people? Like, that's really what I want to do is to help the living. Listen, my allegiance is to the dead. I'll be honest with you. I love spirits more than I love people sometimes because we have to remember they were people at some point. But I always like to understand hauntings and I do have services open. If you're interested in booking a reading with me, I do commune with the dead. I do do paranormal diagnoses. So if you are having an issue with the paranormal, um, you can always come to me and I will be able to read your situation. I've helped quite a few people so far and I will be talking about some of my client stories here obviously anonymously, but I'm so excited. I want to thank you all for being here at the ghost whisperer. Don't forget to like subscribe and rate this podcast in the Apple store, wherever you are consuming this content. And I will see you next time on the ghost whisperer with your ghost host, Chelsea. Have an amazing day. Bye.